At least 10 people were injured last evening after a non-assailant lobbed two grenades at a food kiosk in Garissa town. Regional criminal investigation head Musa Yego confirmed the incident revealing that a non-assailant threw grenades at the eatery at around 7 p.m. and fortunately the explosive device hit a wall. According to Yego, had the, had the grenade not hit the wall there, there would have been more casualties or even fatalities. The injured were rushed to Garissa Level 5 Hospital where they are receiving treatment. Police have cordoned off the area and are on the hunt for possible suspects. And now uh, we'll cross over to Nakuru County where our reporter Patrick Amimo is standing by uh, to give us the update on what exactly is happening there uh, in regard to the PESA Mashinani campaign. Good afternoon, Patrick, and bring us up to speed with the agenda for today. Uh, thank you, Joy Doreen, from the studio. I'm in Nakuru County in Joro constituency where the Council of Governors Chairman uh, Isaac Ruto, accompanied by Kakamega Governor Weekly for Paranya, are here to push the campaign for Pesa Mashinani, their referendum campaign. And uh, these are, this is uh, the, it's part of the Governor's uh, push to have more funds devoted to counties. Now, with me here, I uh, have uh, uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, and maybe just uh, uh, to get to know from him, uh, really just know why did, he, uh, did they decide to bring this uh, campaign to uh, Joro constituency governor yes thank you very much uh, we are proceeding with this campaign all over uh, the republic we'll go to all the counties we will go to all the constituencies as far as we can go to do civic education to explain to kenyans why we feel uh, there, need, there is need for stronger devolved systems and more money to be allocated to the grassroots yeah, indeed. J just looking at it, there, there are those. Is it, are you trying to tell Kenyans that uh, this, the referendum push or the referendum train is unstoppable? Yes, that is for sure. We want to proceed. Uh, we have issues that we have raised. If indeed they are addressed in any other manner, we wouldn't mind. But uh, we are going to proceed to ensure that this is enacted by popular vote. Indeed, there are some of your colleagues, especially when you did launch this, uh, this campaign uh, uh, a few weeks ago, you are, you are many, but the Jubilee administration did say that you are trying to cut back, roll back on its uh, maybe recent achievements, and they say uh, you, this campaign is against the government objective because the, the, the presidency has said they are not supporting it, and uh, maybe also some of the money that was sent to counties last year, most of it, uh, about 30 billion shillings were returned to Treasury, and the government feels that uh, there's no need for more money to the counties. What's your reaction? Uh, first of all, uh, no money was returned to the Treasury. That is a fallacy. It is a lie. Money remains with the counties. No money is ever returned. Remember, the money was released late last year, and uh, some of the development uh, 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 pro projects were yet to take off, and they are already ongoing. Therefore, there is basically no problem in relation to that. I also want to point out that uh, this has nothing to do with government or no government. I mean, this is a matter for the citizens of the Republic of Kenya to go on. Indeed, there are people who say this is this is Pesa Mashimoni or Pesa Mifikoni. What's your, one, your reaction to that? Of course, that is their propaganda and that is their own slur against uh, the wish of the people of Kenya. They can call it anything. It is an indication that uh, they don't care about the people in the villages. They think the people in the villages are living in caves. That's why they think we are in Mashimoni. Uh, they think we are cavemen. We are Kenyans just like themselves. Just because they are well fed, they should not imagine that every other Kenyan is comfortable. Governor, I'm seeing you. You are here in Nakuru County, where the governor is is opposed to this uh, to this to this push for Pesa Mashinani. Your take on that? We are talking to the to the to the citizens. We are not talking to any individual leader. We have to talk to citizens, and we have continued talking to the citizens all over the republic, and we will continue. Indeed, that is uh, from, from, from the chair of the Governor's Council, uh, Isaac Ruto. And also with, with me here we have uh, Governor Is, uh, uh, Wycliffe Oparanya, who, is, uh, who uh, unfortunately I'm told uh, has, has, has just gone to attend to some other issues. So from here, Mauche in, uh, in Joro constituency, Nakuru County, it's back to studio, Doreen. Thank you so much, Patrick Amimo, for those updates. And it's more money to the counties, but are they going to get it? Now, let's move on with more news. A former military officer has been sentenced to life imprisonment by a martial court 
40 starting duty, sitting at Mtongwe Naval Base, Le Lieutenant Jeffrey Okiri Pepela was found guilty of absconding duty in October 2007. The former military officer was escorted to Shimo Latewa Maximum Prison, where 26 other soldiers uh, facing similar charges are also being held. Pepela was among more than 400 soldiers who left the KDF five years ago for greener pastures in Iraq, Kuwait and Afghanistan after they secured employment by U.S. security firms. In May, Senior Assistant Director of Public Prosecutions Alex Muteti told a court of appeal in Malindi that about 800 soldiers have deserted KDF over the last five years. Now, the last time a military officer was sentenced to life imprisonment was during the trial of the 90 82 abortive coup ringleaders and we'll now move on to Makoweni where a section of women are still grappling with maternal health challenges according to uh, reports health workers insist that maternal deaths have reduced significantly due, due to availability of new equipment residents of Thongoni location are however asking for the establishment of a health facility closer to them KTN's Mashari Makapone reports These are the challenges that expectant mothers face in Ntongoni location, Makueni County. <coughs> when the pain is unbearable, she is forced to get off the bicycle with a need to just lie down, but those around her encourage her to be strong until she gets to the nearest hospital three kilometers away. <coughs> Wakina mama wakiwa wazido, wanazalia nziani, tunapata, tunapata shida nyingi Kwa sababu tunaenda na mbaizikeli, mamawe ni nyingi, mpalapala ni mbaya Tunapata watoto wengi, wanaitwa mwanzia Kwa mana wamechaliwa, wame, wamezaliwa, wakiwa kwa njia Before the luxury of border borders in this area, the women say life was much harder but even then, the border borders have challenges of their own when the expectant mother is ready to deliver while on the way. At the various county level hospitals in the area, health officials can only boast of the progress made technologically and the reduction of maternal deaths. Now we have nine theaters in, in, in the county, uh, down from three, and this uh, obviously has led to more patients getting emergency services, especially mothers who are delivering uh, in these facilities. But those on the ground say their inaccessibility to the health facilities is a challenge that prevents them from enjoying what is meant to be free. Community health workers, wamesema kama ni mtu anaanza kusaa apelekwe kwa kwa nini kwa hospitali asisalie huku ambapo sisi tunasaidia tu manake huyu mtu ukimpeleka huku anaweza ku the interesting bit, however, is that the maternal challenges being experienced in Tongoni location are in Makweni County, where just recently <laughs> leaders and their supporters had a scuffle that left five people injured in a gun drama. <laughs> All this while, the screams of women trying to get to hospital to deliver go unnoticed. And of course, if you could make your way to the Rugby Sevens, that is at Kasarani, you'll be able to catch all the rugby action there. And those of you who are football fans, you just have to look out for 2 p.m. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. That's it that we had for you in this edition of Weekend at One. For more news, do log on to our website, standardmedia.co.ke. Up next, though, is Africa Speaks. And today we are focusing on journalists in conflict areas. Just what do they have to put up with while covering stories in areas like South Sudan, like the Central African Republic? And we've got Frank Odueso, who is here to give his experience on covering the conflict in Bor, South Sudan. Do stay with us.